Orangewood Guitars is a direct consumer guitar company. You liked the review we did on the last Orangewood that they sent us, so they decided to send us another one. Today we are reviewing the Orangewood Oliver M, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store for customized t-shirts and other swag. All kinds of swag. We got a podcast. We have Patreon going on. Podcast is uh, the fretboard confessional where yeah. Cooper just like bleeding heart and lets everybody know what's going we on in kneel, his life. We so. kneel, like in a confession kind of thing. <laughs> There's robes. It's fun. Yeah. So uh, today we are reviewing the Orangewood Oliver M. If you missed our last review of Orangewood... Uh, we can link that above. Orangewood, if you're not familiar, is a direct-to-consumer model guitar company. They do acoustic guitars. They've been around for a few years. Um, and it's an interesting model. I have my questions about it. I have encouragement for them. I think they need to have some kind of a warranty setup. You know, Even with a company like, say, Fender, there's warranty yeah. centers all over the country. So regardless of where you buy your Fender, you can get taken care of. But one of the big benefits of dealers is, you know, they help you find gear and repair your guitar. So there's definitely that question. But otherwise, they're making high quality, lower priced acoustic guitars um, and sending them direct to you. Their marketing, I think, is on point. Mm -hmm. um, I like their designs for the most part. And we noticed today they changed their font. Do you think it was because of what we said in our last video? I think so. You know, on the, what was that, the Echo TS? Yes. Uh, they threw on the font on the headstock. Well, that was their normal font, like all, across all of their guitars. It was Cooper, all right? Cooper Standard. Was, yeah, and I mean, I love the font. It's the same font as Vote for Pedro, but <laughs> they need a little cachet, you I'm, know? You got to make it... They should do a Napoleon signature orange wood that says Vote for Pedro. And, and it's got font. shocks, pegs, <laughs> lucky, all right? So what's interesting is, is if you have one of those older orange wood with the Cooper Standard font on the headstock, we can now say... You have a vintage orange wood. Yeah, it's classic. Uh, because it's changed to this new script font. It looks good. It does. I like it. Um, the last one was kind of white, too, I think. And it's got this kind of gold yeah. gold thing. So all in all, let's talk about the guitar. So this is a smaller triple O body, folk body size uh, acoustic guitar. This is straight up acoustic. It is not acoustic electric. Um, it is mostly well constructed. We're, a little a few things I'm going to point out. Um, and I'll get to what it sounds like and plays like after we do the demo. But here's the kicker. I'll let you hold it. I've been holding it. I have not gotten to hold it yet today. Cooper, how much do you think that guitar costs? With a gig bag. Here, hand me the gig bag. You had the gig bag I earlier. got the gig bag. Okay, so, so it comes with this guy, which is a, a bit... Honestly, it's a bigger gig bag than you need for this size guitar. So they've got the one-size-fits-all approach. But, you know, it's... You put a whole guy in there. It's, it's, it's a small toddler. It's fairly well padded. You've got you know, a strap here for neck support, and you've got a large accessory pocket. You know, it's a decent gig bag. So let me ask a couple questions before I make my quote. Your guess, yeah. yeah. Is this all solid mahogany? Um, the back and sides are not. Is the it top is. Solid top mahogany, and is this laminate, or is this a different? It's laminate. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, <laughs> smells good. That's a good sign for me. I like to smell all the guitars. I'm yeah. going to double check the top. I'm going on their website. Orangewood.com. I was on there a second ago. We're doing in-store research. In-store research. Because so, I looked at it a second ago, and I'm going, like, it is, that is what it said, right? Yeah, solid mahogany, layered mahogany. For layered back mahogany, and back and sides. Nice satin finish. I like it. I think it feels good. Checking texts over here now. <laughs> no, it's... At it. I, I caught the, the... So the fretboard, they say it's rosewood. But then they say it's sono kelling. Sonokling. Sonokling? So it's not rosewood. My cousins just went sonokling in Costa See? Rica, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's rosewood, but it's not rosewood? Yeah. I guess. Something like that. So, you know, at least they're telling you. Um, solid mahogany top, layered mahogany back and sides, snorkeling fretboard. <laughs> snorkeling and, fretboard, um, yes. I mean, it's it looks good. Yeah. I dig it. I think that the guitar is... Four ninety nine. Hundred and ninety dollars. 
I, I'm not, I didn't guess that to like inflate. I promise you I didn't know that. I feel With like... With a gig bag, 190 bucks. I feel like most of the time a guitar layered back and sides, mahogany top. With we're, solid, yeah, it's at least solid over 200 mahogany bucks. mahogany top and a gig bag. A lot of brands that we carry, that guitar is going to cost you $399, You're right. $449, something like that. Particularly lately. I mean, maybe yeah. a few years ago, a lot of those would have been like $250. Yeah. But pricing just keeps going up. Yeah, that's so. pretty wild. I honestly was under the impression that we were getting like, a, you know, higher end orange wood because I really, I did not know what I was coming into. I saw the name Oliver M. We have a new Oliver M. We do in the Alma family. Yep. Patrick had his first child. He's Oliver. smaller than this. Yeah, he can fit in a gig bag. <laughs> he could. Um, we'll let Patrick know. But yeah, I, I mean. Mazel tov, Patrick. I think it's, it's a sharp looking guitar. You always talk about fit and finish. It's a, it's good. It's good looking. It's okay. Let's talk about fit and finish because Orangewood is bringing in this guitar at $190, which tells me that their margins are thin and I wonder if they're making money at all. They can do that because it is direct to consumer. They don't have a dealer base. There is no markup, conceivably, right? So they're trying to maximize what they can do, keep the pricing low. But I, I, I have to th think that at $190 bucks with a gig bag, there's not a lot of profit in this for them. Um, overall, I think the guitar is well made. You're yeah. just looking inside. Clean glue joints. You don't see a bunch of blobs of glue like you would sometimes see in uh, a lot of big brand name guitars that were lower priced or even sometimes higher priced. Um, it's got binding on it. As far it appears to have binding and purfling. So they didn't like not do that in order to save money. Uh, the tuners are pretty bad. Um, I did mention that uh, to to Josh. Uh, earlier on, I was like, yeah. The, he said, are you going to say that? I'm like, yeah, the tuners the tuners are not great. Um, These aren't the GoTo 510s? They're not the GoTo 510s. They're not 18 to 1. Yeah, but, I mean, they're par for the course for about a $200 price guitar. So yeah. it's not like they're really terrible. It's not like an Amazon you know, $40 guitar or anything like that. Uh, they're just, they're, they're not that great. Um, let's listen to it, and then I'll get into the rest, shall we? So uh, here's what you can expect from the guitar. It's acoustic uh, with a solid top, so you're gonna get more resonance, but it's mahogany. So it's not as dynamically rich as a spruce top. A lot of mid-range, a lot of warmth is gonna come out of the guitar, and I play a few different pieces to give you an idea of what it sounds like, so check it out.
All right, so here are my thoughts on the playability and the sound of the guitar. I think the guitar plays pretty well. There are not any sharp fret ends, uh, which is great. There are higher end guitars that we sometimes carry that will get sharp fret ends. And a lot of times on a guitar that's made overseas, that is a problem that can creep up. Do you know why? Because change in climate and shipping? It's exactly it. So when a guitar is made in Southeast Asia, it's an extremely humid place. Um, if, the, if the factory is not kept climate controlled, if the wood is not dried out uh, properly, um, then what will happen is the guitar gets made, the neck is effectively swollen. On the trip over to the U.S. or wherever it's going, it dries out, and then you unbox a guitar where the neck has effectively shrunk. Um, and so then you have fret tangs off the ends, and it's not a pleasant sensation. It's always uh, one of my feeling. favorite feelings. Um, now, this doesn't have that, and that could be from a number of reasons. One, they either properly season the wood, or two... Texas feels like Southeast Asia right Texas now. Texas feels like Southeast Asia. There's a third one, though. Uh, some builders are anticipating that, and so they are fretting their guitars with sh shrinkage in mind. But it was, in, it was in the pool. It was in the uh, pool. <laughs> so, um, so it could be that. And if you look at it, the, the fret tangs are just tiny short from the end of the fretboard. Yeah. So, uh, so that may be what they're doing to compensate for that. I'm not sure. All in all, though... It's, it's got pretty good fit and finish. Yeah. There's some finish issues, though. Um, so the finish, the satin finish is a little rough in places, like right here. It's louder than right here. Yeah. And you can feel there's a few bumps in there from the, the finish that wasn't really sanded down enough. I don't know if you noticed on the back, the purfling right under the heel. Mm -hmm. Kind of got, you know, a little dip yeah. in there. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's not a big deal. There's a tiny misalignment. The bigger thing is the top. The, the finish on the top is not consistent. It's a street master. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of, um, I, I'm going to go with uh, probably sanding marks mm -hmm. and depth changes. Yeah. Uh, now, we've seen this on some higher-end guitars, but they don't get sold like that. Um, they're B-stock or they're factory seconds or something like that, um, or they get sent back. Um, so, there's a few issues, but for 190 bucks, uh, it's really nitpicking. It really is nitpicking to say yeah. like, I I would not accept that on a more expensive guitar. But at 190 bucks, meh. I think some of the other brands that we carry probably would not send a guitar out like that. Yeah. But they have their own things. You yeah. Know? A common deal that you have in a guitar at this price point is tuning up the G string. It would ping. And that, if you don't know, is basically where the nut slot is not cut cleanly enough. It's a little too narrow. So the wraps on the strings are getting caught. And that will lead to tuning issues. Um, so, but again, 190 bucks for the gig bag. Yeah, I, I think that both you and I would probably recommend this $190 guitar over plenty other sub $200 guitars that you could get with or without a name brand on them. A lot of unbranded guitars yeah. that are sold at you know weird markets and stuff in san antonio uh for a hundred dollars you know this is a better bet yeah this is really superior to most guitars that are under the 200 hundred dollar price point um there are brand names that have maybe f on the headstock that tend to have more consistent quality or less issues like what we're seeing here Furch. um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but you know, rhymes with slender, but you know, I, I think this is a really good good uh, value from the build standpoint. Now, the playability, playability is fine. I didn't get to play it, so yeah, going off. Uh, the action's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Has a little bit too much relief in the neck, but not much. That's a relief. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just full of them today. <laughs> it's a relief. Um, it plays okay. Again, no complaints really until you get to the higher re register, and then you know, it's it's a little high. But not too bad. I didn't really like the sound of it. What were you hearing? It's unbalanced. So the the lower strings are just a little thuddy. You know? Yep. Versus nice and clear highs. Um, and so, you know, you typically don't want that. Now, there, there's a time and a place to have a guitar that's got that lo-fi sound where it is a little bit thuddy across the guitar. Yeah. And then you have the brilliance that you want across the guitar. You don't really want the mix and match because what ends up happening is you're playing stuff and your your low end just isn't there. Yeah. And all you're getting is high end. Um, 
so that that's my biggest complaint on this guitar mm-hmm. is is it's just it's an in it's an unequal playing experience as far as the tone is concerned. But I think most people learning yeah. wouldn't care or really notice all that much. Yeah. No, I, I feel that for sure. And again, for your first guitar, great price to get in at. Typically, most things from any other brand name that you've probably heard of are going to start over $200. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's definitely a nice value for what you're getting. There's shortcomings, but it's to be expected. And our last review that we did of Orangewood, a lot of the response was, because we, we were playing kind of a more expensive version of what they make, mm-hmm. and I didn't feel that it really measured up to other brand name guitars at that same price point. And a lot of the feedback was, you need to try some of their lower price stuff because they're really hitting it out of the park there as far as dollar to value. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think I agree. I mm-hmm. think the Oliver M at under $200 with a gig bag is a really well-made guitar for the price um, with some of the inconsistencies a given. Uh, I think most people would be happy with a sub $200 guitar. Yeah. That being said, I think there are better guitars for a little bit more money. Um, and so if you are, are wanting something that's a little bit more consistent or really from a, from a sound standpoint, a little bit more balanced, um, then there are brands that uh, a lot of companies, including ourselves, carry they would be more expensive by probably about $75 to $100. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, I think they are better guitars. So. And it's cool. You don't get a ton of like typically entry solid top guitars, a lot of spruce. Mm-hmm. Way less options with mahogany, so it's cool to see something with mahogany. I think that we've done so much of all mahogany and solid top mahogany that I feel like we're in the age of like Sitka's out, and it's cool cooler to have a mahogany top guitar right now. Yeah. Um, so if that's also something, if you are you love and your dream guitar is the 00015M or you know the new 8022E or something like that, this is a cool light version and then you can work your way up if that's the sound that you like, which is pretty cool. Not a ton of solid top mahogany top guitars. This is like the extremely version. light version. It's super light. It's like you can go to a bakery and get like the best yeah. cookie. Yeah. Or you can go to the aisle and you can get something from Chips Ahoy. Or you can go get like a single one out of like a box of Cookie Crisp. I mean, Cookie Crisp, is, it's not bad, dude. Yeah, but you're, that's all about quantity over quality. We're trying to say the nice stuff. <laughs> 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 no, it, if it's you love good, Cookie Crisp, you're you'll in love for this a treat, guitar. dude. No, I, I do. I think this is a good guitar yeah, for yeah. the price. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that is where it's at. Um, and Orangewood fans, uh, hopefully that's good enough for you. Uh, and Orangewood, I yeah, appreciate you guys sending this to us. And we will. Con- we, I'd love to continue to uh, to review more of their guitars. Yep. I like what they're doing from a marketing standpoint. I like that they're bringing some high quality guitars to the masses because one thing is for sure, and that is that competition improves things. Yeah. You know, and so if there's a few brands that have cornered the market at like the two hundred dollar price point, having competition with good guitars will make them push to make their guitars better. You know, and everyone gets better guitars. So that's a plus. Anyway. Good for me. If you want more information about this, you don't go to our website because we don't sell Orangewood and neither does any other dealer. You have to go to orangewoodguitars.com. Um, and then you can check out their Oliver line and the other lines like the Echo that we've reviewed before and others that they make. So without their standard Cooper font and it's now the script yeah, font. We've moved on from that. Moved on. I wonder how much a vintage orange wood is going to go for. 195 dude. At a guitar show in a few years. Yeah, it's going we'll to be it. going for yeah. like you know, $1,000. So, Anyways, if you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, keep coming back for more. At the end of the day, I think the best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing, regardless of what you paid for it. So keep playing, keep coming back, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>